Hey, it's Shri here. In today's video, I'm going to talk you through what to do if your husband has cheated on you. Now, before we dive in, I know that going through infidelity is such a crushing pain on so many levels. Not just the betrayal, but the feelings of rejection and abandonment. It just, it's huge. So I want you to understand that I know what you're going through right now. And I've spoken to so many women over the years about the kind of pain that they're having to deal with. And so I am here to serve you. So what I really want you to do is make sure you're going through this entire video so that you extract all the information that you can to help you to move forward. And at the end, I'll make sure I give you a couple of steps that you can start to take in order to be able to move forward. And make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell notification so that every week you get access to my latest videos where I talk you through how to recover from infidelity, how to really heal from within, how to learn more about male psychology, and ultimately do your best to be able to save your marriage in the quickest possible time. Now infidelity can happen in many different ways. You know, sometimes it can be a situation where, you know, your husband is just showing some signs of some odd behavior. You're starting to question what he's doing. You might be sitting in front of the phone all the time and smiling and smirking away. And Or you might notice he's been spending a ton of time at work and that's starting to make you suspicious. There are also other instances where you're not noticing anything. You might just notice that he's being a little bit more angry, a little bit more short towards you. And you know, your initial focus is how to get him to be a little bit nicer to you. And then in time, you discover that he's actually been cheating on you and that's the reason why he's been getting angry. Probably because he's been projecting a lot of his own guilt and, and anger that he's feeling towards himself onto you and making it like it's your fault. So the discovery of infidelity can happen in different ways. But the question then becomes, what do we actually do when we discover that? Because it's so painful. You know, it is the most crushing pain. And now, having been cheated on in the past by a previous girlfriend, you know, I know how difficult it is. And then when you're married, it just gets taken to a whole different level. And so naturally, you're going to be confused. You're not going to be sure what to do. You're not going to be sure the steps that you need to take. And so... What I really want to do in today's video is walk you through four really important steps that you can start to take when you're having to deal with this so that ultimately you are moving forward in the best possible way and not falling into some traps that you know a lot of people do fall into when they've been on the receiving end of infidelity. It's not easy, it's a really difficult place so there's no judgment but if you can try and avoid some of these pitfalls and take these four steps it just helps you to move forward in the best possible way and ultimately get the, the best outcome that you possibly can. Now the first step that you want to make sure you take is to not act impulsively. You see, when you've discovered this information, there's going to be things that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to beg. You're going to want to plead. You might want to drive over to the other woman's house and just give her a complete serve and tell her why are you breaking up this family and all of that stuff. You might have instances where you just say, you know what, I'm done, finished, that's it, over. But it's really important to know that in that initial stage, you want to actually take a step back and just give yourself a few days, a week or two, just to kind of settle things down a little bit. Let the dust settle a little bit so that you can have clarity of mind moving forward. If you act on impulse, it's ultimately going to lead you to make poor decisions. And this applies in any area of our lives. Whenever we get bad news, you don't want to act impulsively on things because if you act impulsively, it's going to lead you to make decisions that you'll probably regret in the long run. So really make sure you just give yourself a little bit of time, a little bit of space to just get yourself out of that environment. Or if you can't get yourself out of that environment, just don't make any decisions for a little bit of time. And I'd probably suggest... You know, even just in the first couple of weeks, try not to do anything impulsively at that moment in time. Let the dust settle. It does get easier emotionally over time. You definitely want to be doing things for your own self in order to fast track that healing. But remember, it will get easier. But you've just got to give yourself a little bit of time initially anyway, so that you can start to make the best decisions that you can. Now, the second step you want to take is to make sure you get a little bit of legal advice. Now, whilst I'm a big advocate for wanting to save marriages, I do believe that sometimes we have to get the facts, we have to get the information that we can in order to protect ourselves so that we know if worst case scenario eventuates, then we are okay, that we're protected, whether that be financially and the kids and all of that stuff. 
I think it's good to get that information first. It doesn't mean you have to act on any of it or you know hire a lawyer or anything like that, but I think it's good to get the information that you need so that you're aware of what are the consequences of this. And the reason I say this is because a lot of the time when people are involved in marriages and there's a situation where you know the husband has cheated on them, they say initially that they want to save the marriage, but then over time they start to realize, hang on, I don't know if I do want this marriage. What happens is those initial stages where they say they want the marriage is ultimately because they're afraid that what are they going to do financially? How's it going to impact the kids? We don't like change as human beings. Even if it's a bad environment, we don't like change. It's sort of the better the devil you know than the devil you don't. So the initial emotions are going to be, I just want to save the marriage. But if you can get clarity, so in other words, you know that you're going to be okay financially, or even if you're not, you at least know what steps you need to take, or you understand the consequences of a separation or of a divorce or whatever, then you can start to make better decisions and prepare yourself. Whereas if you don't know, you're always going to be reacting at a deeper emotional level and you don't want to be making impulsive decisions like I said on step one. You want to understand the consequences of certain actions and then act from there. Now the third step you want to take is to make sure you keep the communication really calm and really relaxed with him especially in those initial sort of few weeks to potentially a couple of months. If you're always in a place where you're reacting to him, it's going to further vindicate his decision. He's going to feel like, see, this is the reason why I did this. I didn't feel like I could even speak to you because you're just going to lose it. Now, men and women communicate in such different ways, and it's important to understand that. And I go through that in depth in my training program, The Authentic Relationship System, which if you want to learn more about it, you can book a call with me below. But because of the differences between the way in which men and women communicate, sometimes men don't feel like they know how to express their frustrations or express their concerns. So then they say nothing, or they shut down, or they go off and act in stupid ways. And then what happens is the woman might find out that he's cheated on her or he wants a separation, whatever, and starts to feel like, but hang on, you never raised any of this stuff with me. Like, if you'd talked to me about it, then what the hell? I wouldn't have, you know, we could have worked through some of this stuff. But then he's thinking, but if I had said those things to you earlier, you would have got really angry at me or annoyed and that would have blown things up and so on. So both parties often have very different perspectives on how to handle certain things and also how to communicate. So that's why initially, at the beginning, as much as your instincts want to be to launch at him and say certain things potentially, you want to just keep it calm, you want to keep it cool. Doesn't mean that you just are super nice to him 24 seven and doing whatever it is that he asks and so on. You set boundaries, so you decide what those boundaries are, whether that's you know, not allowing him to use the car anymore, or deciding that you're not gonna drop him off at work anymore, or deciding that you're not gonna be intimate with him anymore. Whatever those boundaries are, you need to decide on those and set those. But in terms of the communication, you don't wanna to get to a place where you're you know, viciously launching and so on. Yes, our instincts is gonna to wanna to say like, you did this to me, how dare you, fuck you, all that sort of stuff. You're gonna to wanna to say those sorts of things because that is the natural instinct. However, if you do that, if you fire up at him regularly, it's going to cause more problems in the long run. It's gonna make him feel like, see, this is the very reason why I even felt scared to say some of those things at the very beginning. So try not to react too much on emotion Keep the communication really relaxed. You know, maintain the communication about the kids. Now the reason why you want to keep it nice and relaxed and, and as calm as possible is because you want to ensure that there are positive associations for him when it comes to communicating and interacting with you. At the end of the day, if you've got kids, you guys are tied at the hip until they're at least 18. So you want to make sure that there is still an amicable situation between the two of you. Secondly, if you do want to save this marriage in the long run, you know, you want to make sure that once again there are positive associations there. So when he thinks of you, he thinks of someone who's very caring and loving and respectful and all of that good stuff. Now that doesn't mean that you just run into his arms if he decides he wants to come back. You've got to set your boundaries, you've got to set your standards. But the point is, is that it maximizes your chances of saving your marriage if you can keep the communication as calm as possible. 
yes set boundaries but try not to exacerbate the situation by you know launching and being harsh verbally and so on even if you think he deserves it and finally just be prepared for the vacillating thoughts and emotions you see there may be moments where you're like you know what i don't want this anymore i don't deserve to be treated like this to hell with them he can just bugger off and and leave right there are going to be moments like that but equally there are going to be times where you probably feel like am i doing the right thing do i want to save this marriage did i do certain things wrong I don't really want to move on yet and so you're going to have plenty of those thoughts and it's okay to have those thoughts it's okay to be in a place where you know you're struggling on lots of levels and you find yourself vacillating back and forth in terms of situations very very normal so be okay with it accept those emotions and accept those thoughts it will shift over time however how quickly kind of depends on how much of the internal work that you're actually doing on yourself at the moment you know i really believe that you know transformation can be fast tracked but we have to go deep internally we've got to understand what are some of the thoughts what are the beliefs that we're holding on to also from a practical point of view in terms of the actual marriage you know how did we connect over the years you know were there fundamental differences were our core values misaligned at different stages you know what were the fundamental challenges but also how can i also do the healing on myself it is so so important and the way we do that is by understanding our thoughts our emotions our core wounds and really healing those and shifting those and once we start to shift it that's when things really can start to happen and i truly believe that when we start to make those shifts that's where we give ourselves the greatest chances of saving your marriage you see I'm a huge believer that in order to save your marriage, you have to heal yourself. Now, people sit there and go, but hang on, why? he was the one that cheated. Why on earth do I have to do the work? We always have to do the work because we are the centerpiece of our life. We are the creator of our thoughts and our emotions. But also, when we're in a positive state, we draw in magnificent things into our lives. If we're in a negative state, we tend to draw in some negative experiences. So we really want to do the healing on the inside to be able to draw in the good stuff into our lives and i know this from experience i've seen it with clients that's where the magic happens now i know sometimes it can be a little bit scary kind of trying to figure out what exactly do i do or even just the uncertainty of not knowing what to do it it can really throw you off and so if you are in a position where you're struggling you don't know you know what to do you're not sure what steps to take then you know, I'd love to be of service to you through my program, The Authentic Relationship System. It's an amazing program. We go really deep into not only your marriage, but also your own psychology, your own healing, help you to learn some fundamental principles that are going to actually help you to grow and to be the best version of yourself and to really maximize your chances of saving your marriage, but also experiencing a huge amount of success in all areas of your life as well. So if it is something that you know you want to be a part of, if you resonate with my material and connect with me, then you know I'd love to be of service to you. So all you need to do is in the description section below, just click on that link where it says book a call with me. Just click on that link, choose a time that works for you, and then I'll contact you personally at the scheduled time just so I can learn a little bit more about you and where you're at now and where you want to get to and just how we can bridge that gap in the shortest possible time. And thank you for placing your faith in me. It, you know, it truly warms my heart when I hear about some amazing stories of clients who have been able to save their marriage and really create that healing. And you know, I'd love you to be the next as well. So once again, just click on that link, choose a time that works for you, and then I'll contact you at that scheduled time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, make sure you hit that like button below. If you want to get more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And do let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this video as well. Or if you have any questions, just write them below in the comment section and I'll make sure I respond to every single one of you. And if you want to learn how to get your husband back, just click this video above. If you want to learn how to get your husband to love you again, just click this video above. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you in the very next video.